Okay, so thank you for inviting me for this, uh, for this conference. I'm very happy to be here and, uh, and the presentation, uh, especially yesterday, was, was very interesting to, to what I'm going to try to develop today. Well, my, the, I'm not working an, uh, as my geography working on international migration issues. So I'm not working specifically on the <coughs> question of urban issues as such. Um, but I think that um, what I heard yesterday and today in, in, in the morning um, can be very interesting to, to have to, to bring an approach bringing migration and mobility um, inside this uh, inside the, uh, the debate when talking about we're thinking informality. Um, well, so my uh, I'll just um, try to develop links between informality and mobility and more or less migration model. Well, this can be understood, I think, in, in, in two ways. Um, the first thing is that, well, migrants um, are settling in, um, in informal urban areas, mainly here in the, uh, in the region. Uh, and the, the second element that can be understood by linking these two, two terms, informality and mobility, is um, that most of the migration here in the region can be considered at one point or another as, as being informal migration movements. Most of the migrants don't have uh, residency rights, full residency rights uh, in the country where they reside uh, or they are um, illegal migrants. And it's another element that most of this, uh, the migrants that I will talk about, and, and mainly I will make a brief presentation on the Palestinians, and then a much more developed one on Iraqis in Syria, um, is that they don't reside in, in, in places with, with contracts, that they, if they rent their house, it's not on a legal base. Um, well, um, and then, the two observations I did during my, my, my research since the mid-90s here in Lebanon on the Palestinians and then after 2006 in Syria on Iraqis uh, led me to explore this relation between informality and, and, uh, and mobility. Um, the first thing that it has been, um, I think during this day and a half, not very developed here, that informal spaces that we're talking about, and, and the one that I study is specifically, it means South Lebanon, uh, around Tyre region, informal gatherings in refugee camps, and then um, um, Damascus urban area with Iraqis, are characterized by very high level of mobility of different scales. I mean, that the people living in these places are very mobile. And, uh, and I will just talk a little bit further on this on the Palestinian case. And the second aspect that is interesting for me is that um, the, the way or the form of settlement of, of migrants of, or of mobile population, uh, and especially forced migrant, uh, what role does this, the form of settlement, the, the way they settle in the cities, can play um, in, the in the organization of their mobility, the different stages of mobility and the way they migrate and the way they reorganize in exile. And I think that, and, and the second part I will much more develop on the, on the Iraqi case uh, in Syria. Well, m migration is a, is a key issue in the region here and emigration is still very, very high uh, and a very important phenomenon, especially in Lebanon and, and now in Syria and Iraq and Jordan. And immigration towards the Middle East and inside migration in the region is a very important phenomenon. And in this overall migration movements, forced displacement and or refugee populations um, are one of the major aspects of this migration movements. I mean, most of the people who moved in the region are can be considered at one point or another as, as being forced to move. Uh, just Armenians, Palestinians, Lebanese, Iraqis, Syrians, and other minorities of Kurds, Assyrians, and so on. Um, the specificity of mobility, I think, in the region is that it, um, 
you have short-term, long-term migration, reversibility, protracted refugee movements, and one cannot uh, know before what will be the situation of the refugees. Uh, just think about Iraq is in Syria. It's, uh, I mean, nobody can knew that uh, it would be such a huge movement and that a uh, uh, uprising would uh, appear in Syria and they would have to leave. So every time the, the, the political instability in the region uh, leads to a lot of different kind of movement and people have a lot of secondary or third movement migration. And if we think about Palestinians, of course, it's um, the kind of the, the best example of people moving uh, at each stage of, of the different wars that occurs in their country of origin and in their uh, uh, residing where the country where they reside. Um, one of the elements that we can consider that force migrants and refugees, and they, they cannot be considered only as recipient of humanitarian assistance, nor as only as political problems, uh, even if it's something that is extremely important, of course. Uh, but they, the way they organize in exile and the way they organize their mobility uh, generate uh, through their initiatives, copying strategies, deep changes in, uh, in, in, in whole parts of the cities. And, uh, and they always have to adapt uh, with copying strategies to the situation where they live that is often changing. Um, so the question, the main question is, well, how can we link this question of informality in the context of, of mobility at different scales? Uh, and this reminds me of the discussion that has been taken after the first session uh, that has uh, developed the question that I mean, it was just the, one of the last answers of Sylvain Perdigon on the question of people moving a lot in these places of South Lebanon. So I will just uh, make a first short um, um, description of, of what is occurring in the, um, uh, on the, in, in the Palestinian uh, situation I studied in South Lebanon, in formal gathering and, and, and refugee camp. And then I will just elaborate a little bit more on the case of the Iraqi situation uh, in Damascus. Uh, well, the situation in Damascus that I will describe, of course, is, is, is not existing anymore today. Uh, but it, I think it's, it, it was quite a very... In, an extremely interesting experience, uh, even if, if, if today, of course, it doesn't mean uh, anything in, in, in the current context. Well, <clears throat> what we heard yesterday on, on Palestinian refugee camps, um, what, what strikes me, or what, what something that I'm often uh, discussing with, with Sari or, or with Sylvain, that I know for, for a long time, that, well, the, the, the places where Palestinians reside, whether are refugee camps or informal gatherings, uh, and mainly in the south, um, are places where circulation and mobility is extremely high. So we cannot consider that these places, like the inhabitants, are sedentary and they don't move from these camps. Um, if you look at the population, for example, of, of, of a small camp that I studied here, it's only an example. But Mar Elias is, I mean, 99% of the population of Mar Elias refugee camp are not original inhabitants of the camp. You find only five, six families that are originating from uh, the beginning of the 50s in this camp. But most of them are Palestinian who circulated in many places, and then now they gather in this camp. Uh, the same thing in, um, in South Lebanon, uh, around the entire region, uh, you have a huge level of emigration towards Northern Europe, United States, uh, uh, Northern, uh, Northern America, and uh, you have 20, 30 to 40 percent of emigration rate in these places. So the current inhabitants here, it's, it's, it's a very mobile population, and people are just going back and forth, and you have circular movements of Palestinians going out and going back in these places, and families moving through marriages. So, and today, for example, uh, it was just a few days ago in Tyre, it's now full of Palestinians from Syria. You have dozens of families who come from these places. So the population is not stable at all. They are not, uh, we cannot consider them as, as, as being stable and as being sedentary in one place. So when we look at these places and we look at how does, are they organized and what are the links between these places and the overall city, that uh, around them, we just have really to look at these different forms of mobility. 
And in fact, uh, what is extremely interesting in these places is that is all these informal gatherings are very flexible urban spaces. And I think that is interesting because it's the same uh, uh, thing for the, for, for the refugee camps. Um, and, and we really do have to look to this mobility and not just look to the, to the space as a closed space or a state of exception that is completely closed and disconnected from, uh, uh, from the overall movement of the people inside. Um, in, 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 in these specific spaces, and especially in the, in the gatherings, we have, and Sylvain Perdigon told a little bit yesterday about it, it was it's, it's transnational migratory networks reorganizing these places, and, and it's extremely interesting to see how people in very marginalized and deprived area in South Lebanon are connected to Denmark, to Sweden, to Canada, to the United States, going back and forth, and people going, uh, working there, coming back, marriages through these different places of the diaspora. And it's one of the most deprived area and mo one of the most poorest area. Like, for example, Jal al Bahar uh, in Tyre is one of the poorest uh, gathering. Uh, and in fact, they are extremely well connected uh, uh, abroad. And we often meet, when we go there, people living in Sweden who had spent five years, ten years in Sweden, Denmark, Canada, United States, and so on and so forth. So it's re really interesting to see how this mobility uh, have deep impact on the, um, on the organization of the community uh, locally. And, and one of the, would say, byproducts of this mobility is that a lot of houses are built by people abroad in these places, in informal houses. Uh, of course, they're not allowed to, to build in this area because they're not Lebanese, they're not allowed to own anything here in Lebanon. And then you have a lot of free apartments or free houses. And for example, today, most of the Palestinians coming from Syria, they just reside in these free places. So there is kind of, of market that is organized inside the Palestinian community. Um, and this would have not been possible everywhere in the city because prices, you cannot leave an apartment free if you need money and so on. But it's not the case in these places where you can have kind of internal, uh, internal diasporic migration inside the Palestinian diaspora. Um, and then migration dynamics, they really contribute to shape these places. And, and, and in cases of crisis, like the current one in Syria, it's extremely interesting to see how these places are reactive and how, in between brackets, easy it's for some of the Palestinians to uh, have access to, uh, to housing, to different forms of solidarity. Uh, just because these places are really well organized in terms of accommodation of newcomers. Um, so these places are, can be considered as, as territories of circulation for marginalized migrants and, and refugees, whether they are Palestinians, so they can move inside a kind of diasporic uh, mobilities, but also, and if you think to Shatila or Marlies, uh, a large proportion of the inhabitants are not Palestinians, but it's for Shatila camp, it's a well-known example for very long. I mean, it's not absolutely not a new phenomenon, but it's places where you have foreigners, non-Palestinian refugees that are that can be hosted. It's in 2003 you had a lot of Iraqis who came. I met them there, and uh, Sudanese, Bangladeshi, and all different kinds of population that they found accommodation there, and uh, their informal. I mean, the, their informal legal status here made them, I mean, push to all these informal areas where the kind of, kind of autonomy where, where Lebanese security does not enter as such. So there is a, a real link between these informal places or informal buildings and uh, informal areas and, and different kinds of informal migration and mobility. And I think that it's one of the, um, the points uh, that we can raise here. And, and this leads me to... to to, it leads to a, a question that is quite interesting if we think about what has been presented yesterday. is a question of who is legitimate in these places and who is legitimate to participate uh, to uh, the organization of these places. Um, we know that, for example, in the camp you have popular committees, uh, but these popular committees, they reflect only political forces, political Palestinian forces. But what about all these people who are not Palestinians, who are not inside this political game? 
uh, but they reside in these places, how can be, they be legitimate to participate, for in, to, to improve these places, to participate to the life? Uh, and so the question of participation, who is legitimate, and the form of, of mobility is something that I think it is very interesting to, to take into account. Um, well, I will just move now to the, uh, to the question of Iraqis in Damascus. Um, it's, uh, when, I, when I begin to study Iraqis in Damascus in 2006, six, there was about, um, thank you, it was about 300,000 refugees, Iraqis, in, uh, in Damascus. Most of them in Rif Dimash, so in the suburbs of Damascus, that are around 2 million inhabitants. So it's, I mean, more or less 10% of the population that arrived in two or three years. So it's a huge number mm -hmm. of population. Um, this group of Iraqis is characterized by a high level of mobility. People were just moving back and forth a lot from Syria to Iraq. And a lot of people from the diaspora, the, the Iraqi diaspora in Northern Europe, in the United States, just come, or Australia, they come to visit uh, their relatives in, in Damascus. Well, one of the questions was, how does, does it happen that there was no problems of housing, no real problems in Syria with, when accommodating such a large number of people in such a, uh, I mean, a rather small city and in such a short period. Well, one of the first things that um, can be said that where do these people settle? If we look at a map of Damascus that I didn't brought with me, what is interesting is that this, the Iraqis were located uh, mainly in places where you have Palestinian refugee camp, Syrian displaced camp from the Golan area, internal migrants, Syrian internal migrants coming from other regions, and other kind of refugees, so there's Somalis, Sudanese, and it's mainly places like uh, Sed Zainab, uh, Jaramana, uh, Yarmouk refugee camp, and so you had a lot of, of, of its places where you have it that are really defined by, uh, by, by migrant uh, and mobility. And then if you just add to some places like Sid Zainab, uh, pilgrims. So you have a lot of mobility. So these places are really highly connected uh, with a lot of touristic mobility, with um, um, such as pilgrimage, so there's internal mobility, other refugees, internal refugees, uh, displaced, um, protracted refugees, such, such, such as the Palestinian refugee camps. So we have places where migrants of different forms, of different kinds, uh, settled, some of them on a very long time, and some of them in very uh, precarious, uh, precarious, such as, uh, as far as Somalis were really in, in a very precarious uh, situation. So you have, on the one hand, a competition of the poorest on the uh, resources, uh, lo local resources, such as job and accommodation that the prices uh, I mean, increased in, in this period extremely high. I mean, such real estate price, for example, uh, tripled during uh, these two or three years. Uh, but what is interesting, on the other hand, is the potential of, of, uh, of informal gathering of, of these informal uh, um, neighborhoods uh, in terms of access to resources to newcomers. Um, you find in these places different kind of, of housing, different prices for renting. Of course, there are the huge inequalities. You have the poorest living in extremely bad conditions. Uh, you have also the possibility for the refugees to gather uh, in subgroups. So they can really gather together and rebuild solidarity networks. Thank you. And then you have access, uh, access to job. Of course, it's uh, well, with children work, it's exploitation, of course, but also you have a lot of uh, very interesting uh, uh, self-development uh, of a huge Iraqi economy that I just I will show them uh, in a few uh, photographs. Uh, and I think that uh, the Syrian policy of laissez-faire, not giving any status to the uh, Syrians, and uh, not putting them in camps like it was the case for the Palestinians in Iraq who lived in very bad condition at the border, uh, uh, this this, this laissez-faire policy 
was very interesting because it has permitted to, uh, to, the, to the Iraqi population to develop their own uh, solidarity network, their own forms of economy, uh, without a lot of constraint. And it has permitted them first to live without uh, a lot of assistance. And then, on the second hand, it has permitted them to re-immigrate very much more rapidly than in other contexts, because they, can, they have had the possibilities in this informal place to regather and to rebuild informal, uh, informal uh, 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 migratory uh, networks. So I would just, just show you a few, uh, a few pictures on, uh, on uh, and it will, take, it will be my conclusion, um, uh, on the different kind of activities that has been developed by, by Iraqis uh, in, uh, in Syria. And this was the first um, thing that, that, uh, that has completely changed uh, in Syria and in Damascus with the arrival of the Iraqis, is all these huge taxes, the GMCs coming from Iraq, bringing refugees with them. The refugees were just going back and forth with this taxi and bringing things, stuff, selling things and so on with this kind of taxi. And this taxi were, I mean, everywhere. This photo has been taken in Sid Zainab. Um, in 2009 or 10, I don't remember. Uh, another thing is this is, is travel agencies specialized in uh, Dimashq Baghdad. I mean, it's rely, I mean, linking the different uh, countries. And this, taken, this picture has been taken in Sedzaila, but in Jaramana, it was a whole street full only of travel agencies. So this is just to see how mobility is one of the, uh, I mean, of the, the core element of the presence of Iraqis uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Syria. And then you have this uh, Iraqis selling uh, 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 food assistance because they don't eat this. And then on the side here, you find the food that they eat, that they brought from Iraq. So there is a kind of economy that is developing, I mean, using uh, international assistance and, and, uh, and selling products coming from Iraq. And then you have this very interesting uh, uh, um, thing that happened in uh, Masak and Barze, in Sid Zainab, and in all different places such as Jaramana, also is restaurants, Iraqi restaurants who they've loved. And this is uh, the typical mazgouf, Iraqi al al The typical mazgouf, it's the fish, the carp fish that is. Uh, uh, and then you also have this, um, this, uh, this uh, bread that is coming from Kufa. So it's really interesting to see how do they really show uh, uh, the place that they are coming from. Uh, another thing is on informal kind of activities with cellular phone, with, uh, with this uh, young Iraqi guys. And what is very interesting is that really you have, they just show uh, that they are Iraqis. <coughs> and, uh, okay, sorry, and just, uh, <laughs> 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 and just to, and just to conclude, what is interesting is the, um, is the, uh, I have two photos on, on the political activities of Iraqis in Syria. And this is, was, was one of the most important surprise for me. We were in the context, it's before the uprising, there was absolutely no other um, uh, political figures than the, um, I mean, the official Syrian ones. And then the Iraqis through, for example, this photo was taken during Arba'in, I mean, 40 days after Ashura. And you have the political uh, Iraqi parties, so that's one of Muqtada Sadr here, uh, who were distributing tea. Uh, and they really show that they belong to this political party. And it was in the street outside. So this is quite interesting to see that, I mean, even uh, uh, on, because it's not formal parties in Syria, of course, uh, but like informal political activities and the presence of Iraqis can contribute to, to, to bring uh, uh, um, uh, new political uh, parties in, uh, in, the, in the public space. And the second one was taken during the last elections in 2010, and this picture was taken in Jaramana, uh, where you normally have only the uh, photos of, uh, of Bashar al-Assad or, uh, I mean, close, uh, like Hezbollah or Irani president. And now you have the, the street was covered with different uh, uh, um, posters of different political, Iraqi political parties. And, 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 and this happened during uh, uh, the, the, the election in 2006 and then in 2010. But in 2010, it was really a huge, huge movement in the different places where the Iraqis are. <laughs> and so you have this political presence, and this is also a, a byproduct of the presence of, uh, of Iraqis in this, 
in these places. Well, and I will just conclude on this. Thank you.